Hello everyone, welcome to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our uh, preparatory ground instruction for turns, our ninth exercise. You should have uh, taken a look or read through your flight training manual on exercise and nine at this point. Obviously this is an important lesson. We don't wanna be flying straight and level for our whole uh, flight. We wanna be making turns and so you're going to have to know how to turn the aircraft uh, at some point. And uh, the purpose of this is of this lesson is to learn how to turn the aircraft. Let's begin with uh, the different types of turns. We can have a gentle turn, which has an angle of bank of less than 15 degrees. Medium turn, uh, which is a turn between 15 and 30 degrees angle of bank. So that's probably going to be the most common type of turn. And a steep turn, which is angle of bank greater than 30 degrees. If you're steep turns, you can have precision steep turn, which is on your flight test. Uh, flight to standards are uh, 100 feet, plus or minus 100 feet, and you have to roll out within 10 degrees of the assigned heading. You can also have a non-precision uh, steep turn, which is, uh, let's say, if we need to avoid a collision or do a, it's called a canyon turn to get ourselves out uh, of a, a tight situation in the mountains. So this is uh, a diagram. We're going to talk about some theory of turns. This is a diagram that you find in your flight training manual. You'll pretty much see this in every flight training manual. Uh, and uh, it's kind of taken as gospel. Everyone kind of assumes it's true. I'm gonna get you to look at it quick and uh, just think about it for a moment. See if you can find out what's wrong with it. So, oh, we got our good old fashioned wrong uh, stamp back from uh, our grad school. So we'll try to take a look um, at this diagram again and see what is right with it and what's wrong well let's get started so what is correct well this weight this is correct right this is the weight we have a, a lift or a weight vector down the force of gravity then we have this lift vector right here that's correct right and then we have a centripetal force uh, which is a horizontal component and the vertical component of lift but what's wrong here well here's something that's wrong that is wrong that vector does not exist if and then of course this does not exist either now you might think it's like oh yeah of course we have centri centrifugal force uh why not we feel it well if you uh take a look at this and you and you think about this kind of from the top and how this would look like uh if we had this these two forces would balance one another out and the aircraft would not turn okay and so if we want to go a bit deeper of this what uh kind of main problem with it is the this image is actually combining what they're called frames of references okay so it's combining the inertial frame of reference the frame of reference that you would see uh, outside and and so it's kind of confusing the two things so in this case this aircraft would not would not turn so here if we look uh the aircraft in straight and level flight in a the total lift equals the total weight the aircraft does not turn it does not climb it does not descend and then when we have a turn in figure B, uh, because the wings are banked, we have a horizontal component of lift. And it's this horizontal component of lift combined with the forward motion of the aircraft that makes the aircraft uh, turn. This horizontal component is, of course, called centripetal force. So here's something important that you need to know. At higher uh, angles of bank, we're going to have higher load factors, meaning we're also going to have higher angles of attack and a higher stall speed in a turn. The stall speed in a turn is going to be the load factor times the square root of the uh, of the load factor. So 45 degrees is roughly 1.4 times. At a higher angle of, uh, of bank, we end up with a higher load factor and a lower radius of turn. So here's a diagram, a load factor chart. So the load factor is the amount of lift the wing is producing uh, divided by the weight of the aircraft. So as you can see, uh, here's kind of an important one, 60 degrees angle of bank, the load factor is two. That will kind of come up uh, rather regularly. You might see that on a test. You can also have skidding and slipping turns, a uh, skidding turn on the left, you can see the ball on your turn coordinator kind of uh, to the right. It means that you are uh, pushing too much rudder. You don't need so much rudder. It kind of be the equivalent of riding a bicycle and falling off away from your turn. You can also have a slip if you have too much rudder. 
and uh, with the balls kind of the inside of the turn. I got these images from Bold Method if you want to just uh, check out their website, and check out their YouTube uh, channel. We have a phenomenon in aircraft during turns that becomes apparent during turns called adverse yaw. What adverse yaw is when the aircraft yaws away from the turn. It's kind of one of the reasons why we have a rudder uh, to counteract uh, adverse yaw. Typically in light aircraft, it's caused by aileron drag. The downgoing aileron has more drag than the upgoing aileron. It goes into the airstream more than the upgoing one because it's it's blocked less by the wing, just at where its its location is. And so what ends up happening is that you make a roll in a lot of these aircraft, or quite a few aircraft, and the aircraft will not actually turn the way you, you want it to turn. So you have to add a bit of rudder, and this causes uh, what we call adverse yaw. A number of design features that aircraft manufacturers incorporate into the airframe in order to counteract this adverse yaw caused by aileron drag. First is differential ailerons, in that uh, you have an aileron where the downgoing aileron does not go down as far as the upgoing aileron. So what that means is the upgoing aileron, so that means on the downgoing wing, is has more drag to it, which will help the aircraft uh, yaw in the uh, in the direction of the turn. Secondly, we can have freeze ailerons. Uh, so you kind of have a tab on the aileron, you can look on the right side, and then when the, you have an upgoing aileron, it deflects more into uh, the airstream. Take a look on your next, uh, next time you do a walk around on an aircraft, a uh, training airplane, and maybe have your instructor point out, see if you can figure out what kind of uh, ailerons your aircraft, uh, your training aircraft has. Let's talk about the procedure of uh, entering a turn. What you're going to do is you're going to roll using your control yoke or your control stick to the desired banked attitude using the aileron. You're going to coordinate the turn with the rudder, keep that ball in the middle. You're going to have to apply back pressure on the yoke to maintain altitude, especially if you're doing a steep turn. And especially if you're doing a steep turn, you may have to add power to maintain the airspeed. You may also find that you have to climb, descend, and turn simultaneously. To level off, or sorry, to roll out from a turn, you're going to do the opposite. Let's watch a video here of a number of different turns. We have gentle, medium, and steep turns. To enter a gentle turn, smoothly move the control column to the left or to the right to roll the aircraft into a gentle, banked attitude. You might have to add just a bit of back pressure and add some rudder to keep the ball in the middle and keep the turn coordinated. To roll out, move the control column or yoke in the opposite direction to return to straight and level flight. For a medium turn, you follow the same procedure as a gentle turn, but you will notice you will need to apply more rudder and more back pressure to keep the turn coordinated and to maintain altitude. To return to straight and level flight, move the control column in the opposite direction and reduce the back pressure. Too much rudder was added to this turn, making the aircraft skid. Reduce the rudder input. Not enough rudder was added to this turn, making the aircraft slip. Add rudder. Of course, we can have combinations of turns and climbs and descents. In this example, this is a gentle turn to the left combined with a climb. You follow the same procedure as a climb, attitude power trim, and start a roll into the desired banked, out, banked attitude. To return to straight and level flight, it's the same thing as returning to straight and level flight from a climb or a turn, just combined together. And in this example, this is a medium turn 
combined with a descent. This is the kind of attitude that you would see coming in for a landing. To conduct a precision steep turn, roll the aircraft to a banked attitude of 45 degrees. You will need considerable rudder and considerable back pressure to maintain coordinated and level flight. Memorize this attitude. Ask your instructor to show you this attitude when you go flying to the left and to the right and memorize these attitudes. Don't spend too much time looking at the instruments. Look outside most of the time. To roll out, roll the aircraft to a straight and level, reduce the power, and lower the nose a bit. This is a non-precision box canyon steep turn. Abruptly roll the aircraft while climbing, add full power, don't stall, and avoid the obstacle ahead. Once you have are clear of the obstacle, you can return to straight and level cruise flight. The instrument indications from a turn, your attitude indicator is going to show a banked attitude. Your turn coordinator will show a turn and uh, your heading indicator will be turning in the direction of the turn. Let's talk about a, a safety item here, a hazel check. We do a hazel check before we do any steep turns or any unusual attitudes, stalls, spins, slow flight. Uh, he, uh, hazel start, stands for height, area, security, engine, and lookout. So we generally want to uh, recover above 2,000 feet above ground level. A area, we don't want to be over a built up area or an airport. Security, we're going to make sure our seat belts are done up and we're going to take a look behind us into the cargo compartment, make sure that all of our cargo is still secure. We're going to check the engine, so mixture rich, check the carburetor heat and make sure the engine gauges are green. Then we're going to take a really good look out. We're going to look both ways uh, for traffic or do clearing turns. Let's talk about the flight test standards. So it's very important that you have an effective lookout. This is going to be a big thing. You're going to, before you do any sort of turn, make sure the examiner sees you looking out. You can even ask the examiner, do you see anything on your side? You can always involve your examiner on your flight test. Uh, just say, oh, do you see anything on your side? Uh, on a steep turn, uh, you will be expected uh, to have a coordinated uh, turn using pitch, yaw, bank, and power control. You're gonna be at 45 degrees, maintain coordinated flight and you're expected to maintain a, an altitude of 100 feet, airspeed of plus or minus 10 knots, and an angle of bank of plus or minus uh, 10 degrees. You're gonna visually recover from the turn at the pre-selected recovery reference point. Let's have a review. The biggest thing is the hazel check. We want to uh, make sure that uh, we are height above 2000 feet, area is not built up, security, everything's uh, secure, seat belts, and cargo, check our engine and look out for traffic, perhaps do a clearing turn. That concludes this lesson on turns. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in our next lesson.